Hi, Franz with Concrete CMS here. This video is some power user tips and tricks that will help save you time and get you around in the more complicated parts of concrete. Let's jump right in. The sitemap in concrete is how you organize pages within your site. Everything is managed with a tree, and as I expand these pages with subpages, um, you can see that your whole site's displayed right here. Well, one thing that people don't always know is you can drag and drop stuff here. So if I drag resource one right in between resource three and four, you can see I've changed the sort order. That matters because navigations will look for the sort order in terms of how to display stuff on the page. So if I take about and I drag it all the way after privacy policy, I've changed the order of things within the site. I'm gonna quickly clear the cache by typing clear, finding clear cache. And what this does is it removes copies of code and HTML that we create to render your site faster. And if you're noticing that your site doesn't quite do what you think it should, clearing cache is always a great idea. I'm gonna come back here to the home page, and now you see resources is in front of about um, instead of the other way around, which is how it defaults. Other cool things that you can do from the sitemap if I were to drag resources within about, you can see it'll ask me, do I want to move that or copy? So if I copy, it's going to make new instances of that page. If I move, resources now belongs under about. Again, we're going to clear cache just to make sure that we're dealing with the most recent version of everything. And when I come back to my main home page, now resources is underneath about. So you can really organize your site very quickly using the sitemap and just dragging and dropping things around. If you've got a larger site, the drag and drop uh, tree mode may not be best for you. You might want to explore page search or flat view. This is just another way to get back pages from around your site. And if you're doing a bunch of bulk changes, this can be really helpful. So let's search for resource. And we just found all of the pages that have resource in the name. You can see that includes pages of the type resource, but also the resource container page, which is a little bit different. You can use these checkboxes to select a few specific ones, and then come up here and you can do bulk changes here. If I want to delete all of these or move them somewhere, you can even change properties of the page by coming in here and saying, let's add an attribute. Let's exclude all of these from the nav. We'll add the attribute, change the setting that we want, hit save, and we've now updated all four of these pages. Another feature built into page search that saves people a lot of time when they find it is the advanced section. So if I click advanced, you can add filters. So maybe I don't want that page there. I want to only show page types of resource. Um, you can change the way the results look. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and search. Got that looking the way I want. You can actually come back here and save this search as a uh, preset. Now, if I come back, I can just pick from these uh, preset resources. I can, boom, and I will always get back a search of just that query. So that can save a lot of time when you're managing a complicated site. Clipboards and stacks are a great way to save time while making changes across a lot of different pages. Let's quickly put a page in edit mode. And you can see blocks right here actually has a little caret next to it, meaning there's different choices. Clipboard, stacks, and containers. If I take a block and click it, I can copy that to my clipboard. Now, anytime I go to a different page and I wanna use that block again, Plus, instead of adding a new block, I change to my clipboard, and here's that block. I can put it on the page. I can put it in the, uh, different areas on the page more than once, and it's uh, making a new copy of it. So it makes it really fast if I just want to quickly build out a bunch of stuff and reuse some elements that I've got designed just so. If you find yourself doing that an awful lot, you may want to explore stacks. Let's quickly set one up. I will go to the dashboard and you will see stacks and blocks over here. Here are the stacks that are already installed. We can make a new stack. 
footers. Blocks. And let's add a few blocks to it. So we'll do a little content block here. Thanks for reading. And maybe we also want social links perhaps we even want a guest book conversation so now we've got three blocks put together into this stack and if I go to my website and I put this page in edit mode I click the plus I change from clipboard to stacks You'll now see footer blocks, and I can put this right here, and I will get all three of those blocks right in the same spot. If I go back to that stack and make a change, that will be reflected on every page I've added that stack to. So it's a great way to uh, make your site something that you can really make changes across very quickly. The last thing that you should explore if you're doing this a lot is page type defaults. There's another video that gets into how that works. Uh, but a very similar approach of being able to put blocks into the page type so they always show up in the same spot. Permissions are a powerful part of Concrete. They're built right into the core so you can always count on them working in a consistent fashion. If you're building an intranet, uh, employee portal, or some type of application, you'll find permissions to be really valuable. Let's take a look at how they work really quickly here. If I click the gear icon and go to permissions on a default concrete install, you'll see something like this, which is simple permissions mode. Every page has two basic things that you can control about it, who can view the page and who can edit the page. We've got a list of all of the groups on the site here. You can add more groups, but that's about it. For a basic marketing site, this is plenty. But again, if you're building something more complicated, concrete makes it easy to do that. The first thing we're gonna do is turn advanced permissions on. So if you start typing advanced in intelligent search, you'll see advanced permissions. It'll take you to the dashboard. I can en enable advanced permissions. When I do so, I cannot go back to simple permissions. So be thoughtful about doing this to a production site. Um, it won't change the way your site works, but it will open up a lot more possibilities. Now, when I come back to permissions on that same page, you can see there's quite a lot going on. Permissions for pages inherit in different ways. So by default, they follow that sitemap. So a child page is going to have the same permissions as the page above it. You can also configure permissions to come from the type of page that you are creating. So maybe you've got a large site and there are different blogs for different departments or groups within it but you always want a uh, marketing specialist to be able to edit blog posts. Well, you could set up those permissions based on the page type, and then wherever a, uh, that marketing specialist goes, they will always have the same access to, to manage blog, blog detail pages. You can also override permissions on an individual page, which is what we're gonna do. Set that to manual, and you can see these are now blue, meaning I can make changes when I come in. Permissions are inclusive in Concrete, so if you are in any of the groups that are included or any of the, the roles here, you will be um, allowed this right. We do have exclusions that are applied afterwards. So if you want to set something up like um, anybody can edit this page except for people who are in this group, that's, that's how you would use this. You can get very complicated with how permissions work, and that's gonna be beyond the scope of a quick tips video, but you can see you can set permissions to a specific user, um, a set or a combination of groups, the person who first made this page. Um, if you're using multi-site, you can use permissions uh, across multi-site in interesting ways. You can also set timed permissions. So let's just do something simple so I can show you how some of this interface works. If we wanna say registered users, that's anybody who has an account and has logged in. Um, we can say they are gonna get this permission and let's pick a time range for them. Maybe there's some compelling reason that I'm not gonna be able to make up on the fly that they would only want to access for a week or two. That's how you would add that. We'll save that and you can see now we've got 
guest as a gray box that always has access and registered users showing you, well, that's a limited permission. Um, probably makes more sense as an edit permission or something like that. And a great tip that not a lot of people know about is you can actually drag and drop these permission configuration choices around between these different actual permissions. This will save you a lot of time if you are going in there and um, playing with all the settings I just made. When you get this whole permission set looking the way you want, you can also copy that. And there's a little kind of private clipboard where you can copy one set of permissions. If you then go to another page, you'll be able to paste the permissions that you set right here to that, uh, which is also a huge time saver. I just showed you timed permissions at an individual role. There are a couple of convenient ways to do timed permission type things. We should probably show those really quickly. If I make a change to this page, <laughs> Concrete knows if you've made a change or not. If you don't, it doesn't give you this choice, but we've made a change. I can hit publish, but you may have already noticed there's a little clock here. This lets me publish these changes in the future. So if you're doing a press release and you, you, know, you want it to be published in the future, you can do that. You can also have a limited window. You hit schedule and that will happen um, when you schedule it. Another thing to keep in mind is you can actually do this at a detail block level. So since we turned on permissions, they are available at the area level. So I can turn permissions, I can override permissions for a specific area. Maybe I don't want my authors to be able to change header images, but I do want them to change the main content well. So you can set up your site to be very nuanced that way. And you can actually use permissions at an individual block level as well. So if I click this block, you'll see there are permissions here. I can do timed permissions on any of these choices. And there's actually a shortcut. If I hit schedule guest access, that, oh, there we go, uh, lets me change who can see this block at a specific time. So if you want to have um, a promo that's gonna start next Thursday and you want that to show up in the sidebar, you could add the block use scheduled guest access and um, have that show up on its own automatically. Last thing I wanna point out there is you can actually use these permissions for personalization as well. So let's quickly jump over to the dashboard. And if I come into the members area and we'll add a few groups just for um, example sake. Maybe you've got um, a few groups that you're mapping to departments. You've set up single sign-on for your organization and you're putting people in groups. You can organize these groups uh, in a tree as well. So you could start to drag and drop much like you would in the site map. Um, I'm not gonna make you watch all that. Let's pretend that you've built out different departments and you've got users. Users can be in more than one group. So um, you can get very flexible with this. But if I come into this page and put this block up here in permissions, I can now override permissions on this block. And instead of letting the guest view it, I could just let HR view it. Now this block is for HR. I could copy this block and change the data around and have a separate one for marketing. If I put it in the same area next to each other, um, it will only show the one for the person in that group when they come to the page. So you've personalized that content just for them. The file manager is a spot where authors often spend a lot of time. This is where you manage all the assets that are used on the website, be they header images like this or PDFs and Word docs you're linking to. And there's a couple of cool features in there you should know about. Go to files. Probably have discovered you can just drag and drop images into this area, choose which folder they're gonna go to, make a folder on the fly. This is a great way to quickly build stuff out, but sometimes you've got a lot of assets to import or you're in a big um, content migration process. These other tabs are worth knowing about. 
if you have access to the server and you can put images in a directory there, put them in the slash incoming directory. They will all be listed here. You can pick which ones you want to import and import into the file manager right from here. And if you've got images that are out on the web, maybe I'm pulling stuff off of another site. Let's just say I like this image. I'm going to copy the address, put it into this field, hit continue, and your concrete site will actually go out without looking at your local computer, and it'll pull that image directly into the file manager here. So that can save you a lot of time. The other thing that people sometimes miss, if I click through and go to the detail record for the file, there's a bunch of information here. These two URLs are um, important to keep in mind. This tracking URL is a great way to um, share a file with somebody if, you're, if you want to give them a direct link. Try to use the tracking URL. Um, it's not quite as performant because it is serving the file through PHP, but it will check permissions to see if they have the rights to look at the file according to the permissions in the file manager. It will keep tracking it in statistics. Um, you're basically, it, it'll use different versions because you can have versions on files. If you replace this file, it'll use the most recent one. This URL is basically honoring the whole file manager concept in Concrete. If you use the direct URL, link right here, you are just linking to the image on the server where it exists. So it uh, might be a little bit faster, but probably um, you want know, to be careful about using that because you're not going to be able to control that asset later. If you delete it um, and, and, or replace it here, that won't be reflected. You may also notice there's this little edit guy up here. And from here, there's actually a image editor. Um, you can do simple stuff here. Maybe we want to flip this around and I don't have to download this image. I don't have to have a copy of Photoshop. I can make simple changes on the fly to assets using this image editor. You might need to reload to see, there we go, uh, the updated thumbnail, but yeah, little inline image edits right available for you. Another cool feature that a lot of people don't know about built into Concrete version 9 is the theme documentation or style guide. So let me quickly show you. If we go over into pages and themes, here's the two themes that are installed in the site. And if I click this little gear, you'll see a section that says documentation install. So this isn't always installed by default and this might take a moment to run. But once it's done, I can now come back in and view the theme documentation. This is a little microsite showing you how everything in the theme will look. So these are the primary colors that you get when you choose some of the dropdowns in the blocks. Here's typography styles. Um, it's a style guide. So you can show this to a designer and say, please give me a new look and feel for all of the navigation blocks. Here's what they look like by default uh, in the theme that we're currently using. So definitely worth checking out. Um, we use this all the time when we're making CSS changes and we want to double check that we haven't messed up anything that we're not actively looking at on the page. So I hope that saves you some time and you learned something new. These are just some tips and tricks that we came up with when we asked internally, what are you telling clients about in training that always opens their mind? So entirely possible that we've missed something that's obvious to, to us, but um, you don't know about. If that's the case, Please share what those tidbits are in the comments below, and we'll update this video as new versions of Concrete are released. Thanks so much for choosing Concrete, and we'll see you in the next video.